nice, nice evening to be out and about in New York. Uh, so this is the last orientation we're doing now before the program begins this Friday. So essentially this uh, curriculum is the longest established classical feng shui curriculum pretty much in the Western world. I started to uh, teach feng shui about a good sort of 27, 28 years ago. My background was in traditional Chinese medicine and I had a center in Sydney, Australia where I was teaching what is re referred to as the eight rays of traditional Chinese medicine. So I was teaching acupuncture, massage, we had a uh, cooking with uh, you know whole foods like a macrobiotic school at the time. Uh, we had a qigong, doen, sort of tai chi program, a meditation program. So all of these are arts of the Taoist tradition. And part of those arts are feng shui and the environment and their astrology. So I started to teach this about, you could pretty much say 30 years ago, way before it became uh, popular. Uh, feng Shui started to become very popular more like in the uh, mid-90s. There was a number of books that came out in, in, in the early 90s that started to popularize it, particularly from the black sect movement in America here by Professor Lung Yung. And he started to teach uh, Feng Shui and then his students started to uh, write books and it became quite popular around the world. And what happened was people wanted to become practitioners. They were uh, buying the books, uh, but there was really hardly anybody you know, offering any practitioner program at all. In fact, there wasn't. <laughs> and in the meantime, I had already started my curriculum in Sydney, Australia because uh, of the whole uh, program that we had. And also, my interest in this began when I was living in London. I was involved with the East West Centre. And uh, you know, I, I qualified as a, uh, as a health counsellor. And in those days, we had two books on feng shui. So it was quite funny, you know, just two books that were written like in, the, in the late 70s, actually. And so not many people were investigating it and uh, researching it, but all, I had already started with a fascination in the subject. In those days, this is the 80s, uh, the early 80s, there wasn't any feng shui schools around. Uh, there were some uh, Chinese practitioners in the Chinatowns around the world, but pretty much they didn't speak English. And also, there was a tendency in the feng shui world not to teach it because that was their craft and th those guys didn't do classes you know they kind of, there was a, always a little bit like secret what they were what they were doing um, I came across more uh, interesting material when I started to study acupuncture and in the metaphysics of acupuncture you come across the mandalas and the trigrams uh, that we use in feng shui. It's the same kind of material. Uh, and I met some very interesting uh, acupuncture teachers who were Chinese and they started to show me a few things and they started to show me how to use the Tung Sung, which is the Chinese almanac. And so I started, you know, investigating things further. And then when I went back to Sydney, I was confronted with the whole dynamic of not only you know, taking some of this material uh, that I learned from Japanese and Chinese people about diet and health and adapting it to the southern culture, to the Australian culture. So I was already involved with that on a physical level in terms of, you know, the dietary approach and balancing it with the seasons and the culture, etc. And then on a metaphysical level, I was confronted with what does feng shui mean in the southern hemisphere? How do we make those changes? So over a good two to three years, I had to do some really serious thinking about taking those feng shui principles and ideas that I had come across, things like the bagua and the lopan compass, which I'll show you a little bit later on tonight, and how to adapt that to the southern hemisphere. So that's very much when my curriculum really 
kicked into gear because I really started to do a lot of a lot more writing, a lot more teaching, because I was totally engaged in decoding the trigrams, the patterns of the trigrams, what the Bagua means, and all of these systems that they had developed. And there was no book you could read on that at all. And in that process, I had successfully, uh, just using the five elements in yin and yang, though just using those principles, translated those techniques into the southern hemisphere. So, uh, when feng shui started to become popular in the 90s, people wanted to be trained up, and that's when I was invited to come and start uh, running schools in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, England, South America. I taught quite a bit in South America in the, by the late 90s. And so I spent a good 15 years on the road teaching over 70 countries. I started at least about 12 curriculums around the world and trained, ended up training hundreds of people. And uh, purely because I was able to explain what feng shui was, how to apply it, and I was able to decode it. And I was already involved in writing curriculums and I was already involved in creating practitioners for other things like health counseling. So I already knew what it took to take you know, people from the beginning to the middle to the end to build up their confidence so they could do this. And then, quite frankly, I got very much uh, sick of all the travelling. I had schools you know, like in London and Sydney and you know, in Austria and San Francisco. I had a school there for 10 years. So I stopped running that over the last you know, five to six years. I've been slowing down and I just run now this curriculum here in New York. Nowhere else. So I do a little bit of teaching over in uh, Prague because I've been teaching in Prague for the last 12 years. In fact, I organized the first Feng Shui uh, conference in Prague. And before that, in 1996, I organized the first Feng Shui tour of China. It was the first time that it had ever happened. I had about 60 people coming to China. And that was fantastic meeting, you know, the Chinese Feng Shui practitioners who, remember, it was very suppressed. Not so much now, but even in the 90s. And of course, due to the Cultural Revolution, Feng Shui was very suppressed in China. Now, of course, it's opening up and opening up and up. I've been back to China about at least eight times since then. And that was great because I was able to, even though I knew a lot, and, and funnily enough, I was showing them some systems that they didn't know because of, of the suppression and the lack of books, etc. But I was able to fine-tune my curriculum over several several study tours to China and you know integrate that because you know some some people sort of teach certain techniques it's one way and another way and you might come across a book and they're all very very confusing so it's just great going back to China going back to the heartland uh, you know where all of this started and to see how they you know apply these techniques and how they did this uh, art and philosophy so let me tell you a little bit about uh, feng Shui. 